Hello and welcome to today's lesson. The idea behind this is this is just like you were in school. Um, you've got a video to watch of the lesson and you've got tasks to complete as well. On the top right you'll see we've got a little green bubble with five minutes. Wherever you see this kind of shape this is the suggested amount of time that you spend on that task. For some of you it may take a little bit longer, for some of you it may take a little bit less, it doesn't matter too much as long as you get the tasks completed. The beauty of this is that you can pause these videos whenever you need to and then once you've completed the task you can carry on with the lesson. So just like in school we've got four do now tasks to begin with, three questions. The first one is simply writing the title and date in your book. If you've not got your book then please make sure you're writing on a piece of paper. I've written the start of the answer just so you make sure you're writing in full sentences because you're going to be coming back to your work and you're going to need to be able to understand why you wrote down your answers so that you can correct and improve them. So pause the video now, complete your do now tasks and then when you're ready we'll be going through the answers. Okay, so here we go with the answers to these do now questions. There are three processes or jobs that a river does, and they are erosion, transportation, and deposition. Please don't correct your answers just yet, just listen to me talking, and then at the end you can pause it, correct your answers when you're ready. So the three processes are erosion, transportation, and deposition. It's quite easy to think of this as somebody doing their gardening. Erosion is somebody digging up the ground, digging up the soil, the earth, um, and in some cases, in fact, breaking the earth down into smaller chunks. That's what erosion is, where the river breaks the material down. Having broken it down or dug it up, the gardener then puts it in a wheelbarrow, starts taking it across the garden to somewhere else. That's transportation. Rivers do the same thing. They move material along the river. Finally, at some point, intentionally or by accident, as this gardener is, the material is deposited, it's put down somewhere. Rivers do the same thing. They leave material somewhere um, because they lose energy. They're not able to carry it anymore. So these are the three main processes that a river performs. Erosion, transportation and deposition. There are four erosion processes and there are four transportation processes there is one deposition process, but the three main processes performed by a river are erosion, transportation, and deposition. Question two, where do rivers end? A river joins the sea at the mouth. Finally, what is flooding? Flooding is where the water covers the land more than it would do under normal circumstances, because a river is water covering the land just normally. But when a river floods, there is water covering a much larger area that it doesn't normally do. So please check your answers with your green pens, make any corrections that you need to. Again, you've got a suggested time limit of about two minutes to do this. So pause the video for about two minutes and then when you're ready, carry on, please. OK, we're learning today about the coast. And the coast is the area where the land meets the sea. The coast is the area where the land meets the sea. The coast changes due to the three processes that we've learnt about, that is erosion, transportation and deposition. Now, we learned about those in relation to rivers. And actually, those processes perform the same jobs and act in the same way at the coast, at the um, seaside. So it's really convenient for us as geographers that we only actually have to learn it once. It applies to two different situations. Before we go on to those processes, let's have a couple of pic let's have a couple of pictures of the coast just to get an idea of what we're talking about. Before we look at the pictures, though, you're going to need to add that information to your notes. So again, please pause the video for about two minutes. Copy down that information. You can summarise it, put it in your own words if you'd like to, of course. And then when you're ready, hit play. Okay, so we've got two pictures of the coast here, both actually from the UK on the south coast. On the right hand side in the top, we've got the White Cliffs of Dover, 
and in the bottom left we've got an area called Durdle Door, both as I say on the south coast of the UK but quite far apart from each other. We've got two other pictures of the coast here, these are not from the UK, um, the bottom left we don't get palm trees like that, They're usually growing in the coast, um, it is possible but unlikely. Um, that's probably your idea of you know a seaside holiday in the sort of tropical regions um, a lot of kind of the image you get on tv and the media the top right is quite different to that we've got a road by the coast but actually it's been worn away uh, by the sea the waves in this picture don't look very angry or aggressive but actually they can be very very destructive and destroy large areas of the land and that's what's happened in this picture here the process that's happened there is called erosion, but we'll come back to that in a little bit. One more picture, this is an area called Lulworth Cove. Um, really nicely shows you the coast, we've got the sea on the left and the land on the right. The coast isn't just the sea, it isn't just the land, it's both the areas. Uh, Lulworth Cove is also a very popular area for tourists or people on holiday to go and visit. If you ever get the chance to go, thoroughly recommend it, it's a lovely part of the world. So these coastal processes, I mentioned when we saw that picture of the road being broken apart that erosion is responsible. Erosion is where the sea breaks down and destroys rocks and the coast. As well as that road being destroyed, we get features like this. This is Durdle Door that I mentioned, where, <coughs> excuse me, Durdle Door, um, an area where the coast and the rocks has been eroded or broken down so much that this art shape has formed. So erosion makes the coast or features smaller and less stable. That's what erosion does. Transportation is the process where bits of the coast are actually moved around and in some areas that means that the coast will get larger, in some areas it will get smaller. So erosion and transportation go together, uh, transportation and deposition go together. So this beach uh, we can see here in some places will be larger, in some cases will be smaller probably, and that's probably due to transportation, due to the sea moving material around. That's what transportation does. Finally then we've got deposition. Deposition is where the sea um, deposits, it drops off material, and that means that features get larger and larger. So if we have a look at this picture, this is something we call a spit. A slightly unfortunate name. Um, but it's actually grown over time. Probably several hundred years ago, the spit would have only have been as large as that green kind of area, about half the size. But over time, the sea has deposited or dropped off more material, and that's made the spit grow. It's got larger and larger over time, and it will probably continue to grow larger and larger over time. So deposition is where the sea makes features or the coast get larger and larger. OK, what I want you to do now is see how much you can remember from that little mini lecture. Can you write down what the coastal processes do? What does erosion do? What does transportation do? And what does deposition do? Again, this needs to be done in full sentences. And if you finish that within the sort of four to five minute time limit, have a think about which features might be formed. What did I say makes a spit? OK, let's go through the answers then. Uh, again, save your corrections for when I finish talking. Erosion makes the coast or features smaller. Transportation moves material around, making some areas bigger and some smaller. And deposition makes the coast or makes features bigger or larger. So two minutes or so to do your corrections. Maybe it takes you 10 seconds just to put three little ticks. That's not a problem. Once you've done that, hit play. OK, our next task, we're going to look at the erosion processes in a bit more detail. Please don't start this task yet. I'm going to explain the task, a bit of information, and then when I've finished, you can begin. So in this diagram, we've got the four 
erosion processes. And as I mentioned, they're actually the same as the erosion processes that we find in a river. They just happen in basically the same way at the coast. Um, but we really need to understand them and go over them, revise them, so that we can see in future lessons how different features are formed and how we manage these processes, how we stop these issues um, occurring. So let's begin with hydraulic action. In the cliffs or in the rocks you'll find cracks, big sort of splinters almost, um, where they're breaking apart. In these cracks there'll be air. Now the waves will crash into the cracks and trap bits of air down the crack. And when they do, they push the air further and further into the rock and into the crack. And it's a little bit like if you imagine a syringe being pressed down and whatever liquid or air is in the syringe being forced out the end of it. The same thing is happening with that crack. And as a result, huge chunks of rock smaller chunks of rock can be broken apart by this process of hydraulic action. I'm going to add in the description of this a um, link to a video that talks more about these erosion processes. So if you need to, when I finish talking, you can click that link and have a watch. But I'll do my explanation first. So that was hydraulic action. Once these pieces have been broken apart, they can become ammunition for the coast in a process we call abrasion. The sea can pick up rocks and material and throw them at the cliffs or other rocks and when they smash into each other they're going to start to do damage to each other and the cliff or the sides of the coast are going to get broken down by the rocks continually being hurled at the sides of the cliffs. When these pieces have hit the cliff or the side of the coast, they're also going to hit each other. And when they do, they're going to break down, they're going to become smaller and smaller in a process called attrition. And as they smash into each other, become smaller, they generally become rounder and rounder as well, as the edges are just chipped away. The last process I'm going to talk about is called solution. And this is where very, very small pieces of material or sand are actually dissolved into the water. If you've ever made a uh, cup of hot chocolate or coffee and you've put the powder in the water and stirred it round, it disappears. Or, you know, you added sugar, salt to water, it disappears over time. That's the process of solution happening. The material dissolves into the water and then through transportation is moved away. But these four are the erosion processes. They destroy or break down material at the coast. So you've got three things to do. The first is to make a sketch of the diagram, making sure you include the key terms and a description of how they happen. You then need to make sure you give your diagram a title called erosion processes. And if you've got a bit more time left over, you can have a think about what problems these processes might cause. Once again, the suggested time is about 10 minutes. If you need a little bit more, if you need a bit less, don't worry, just hit play when you're ready. Okay, so erosion. Why is it an issue? Well, we saw there that there are different erosion processes. And we saw in the pictures of the coast a road that was broken into bits, basically. Um, and that had happened because of the sea eroding it away. Now, that's pretty inconvenient if you rely on that road to get to work or if you rely on that road to get to the shops or if, say, you live at the end of that road and you need an ambulance. Erosion can cause quite serious issues for people living nearby the coast depending on how quickly it happens. In some areas erosion is very very rapid and you will see 30 centimeters of the coast disappearing overnight in some cases. Um, I'm going to put a link to a video at the end all about the Norfolk coastline which is one area that's eroding very very quickly in the UK. These things that we've learned about today are not just issues in the UK, they're happening all around the world, um, in some cases quicker, in some cases slower. Once you've completed all the tasks, 
in this lesson, you can go back to show my homework and complete the quiz that's been set for today. Hope you found this really useful. Hope you found it informative. If you do have questions or feedback on today's lesson, please send me an email um, and let me know and I'll see if I can use or incorporate that information into the next lesson. Thanks very much for watching. Speak to you all soon.